Hi, I'm Rob from Training Wheels, and today we're going to go through a pre-inspection for a forklift. So when we do a pre-inspection for a forklift, what we're doing, we're checking to make sure everything is okay, ready to be used. So we keep it like a systematic approach so we don't miss anything. Start at the front, start with the forks. So have a look at the forks, check for any damage, uh, come up to the heels, looking for cracks, make sure there's no cracks in the heels. Check the forks themselves, make sure they're evenly spaced to pick up the pallets and the pins are in. Low guard, give it a rattle, make sure it's attached and secure and check that it's nice and straight, not warped in any way. Same goes for the mast, nice and straight, no signs of damage. And then inside the mast, we can have a look to check the chains, make sure they're greased, all the cables are nice and clean and straight, not kinked. Uh, and come down to the front, we can just quickly check for the, uh, any oil signs in the connections down there come around to the back of the mast have a look inside there make sure there's no debris again checking for any oil leaks sign of damage wear and tear the rams nice and clean uh, no signs of damage nice and straight then we'll come down to the tires front tire have a good look at the tire it's a solid rubber tire you've got good tread on this one always check for any chunks in the tire um, even wear, because you don't want the tyres going boom, 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 boom. Uh, any cracks in the walls, and make sure, of course, all the bolts are in, nice and secure. Then we go from the front tyre to the rear tyre. For example, for this rear tyre on our forklift, definitely would be saying the tread is a lot lower on this side. Got a good little chunk out of here. Uh, some cracks in the fire and the wall, uh, but has even wear, which is good and all the bolts again are in, nice and secure. From the rear tire, we come up to what's the data plate. So the data plate is our full description of what the forklift can do. We start master vertical capacity. So the forklift's capable of lifting 2,835 kilograms. Mast tilted forward at the maximum height can lift 1,400 kilograms. The lift height for the forklift is 4,730 millimeters and the load center is 600 millimeters. So the load centre, we'll come to the front quickly explain what 600 millimetres means. So what it is, it's just, it's a measurement taken from somewhere to some point. So 600 millimetres, it's a measurement taken from the face of the vertical fork, 600 millimetres out. And it's also measured from the top of the fork, 600 millimetres up high as well. So for example, we have a load over here. Um, typical pallets, 1200 by 1200, that's where you find most uh, load centers are 600 to begin with. So 600 millimeters is the center of the pallet, but then when you take into account the 600 millimeters from the bottom is 600 millimeters high, is about there. So if I go from that height there into here, dead center, uh, all the measurements are taking at that uh, calculation there. So, uh, for example, uh, in this warehouse, we use the example of uh, our four drums here. They're filled with water, they weigh 250 kilograms each, there's four of them. 250 kilograms times four gives you 1,000 kilograms. And a hardwood pallet is so roughly 60 kilograms. So our total weight to lift these drums is 1,060 kilograms, which is easily within capacity of our forklift, which can take just over 2.8 tonnes. Our lift height is around about 3.6 metres, again, easily within 4.7 metres and as we described before, low centre, all pallets are stacked evenly and correctly and within their capacity. Coming back to the forklift, we have what's called the overhead guard. A little bit of a shake, make sure it's all attached, uh, all the welds are in good condition, no damage from up top so it hasn't had any action. Everything else on the overhead guard we check at the same time. We've got the mirrors. Make sure the mirrors are nice and clean and they're attached and they're adjustable. The lights, check all the lights, make sure one, they're there, two, they're clean, and three, check for any cracks or damage in them. Check the front lights. And then also come around, we'll check the back lights, make sure they're all there. Uh, you've got the flasher up top in very good condition, nice and clean, and your dust collector here. Once everything on the overhead guard is checked, we come into the cockpit. So now, first thing to check is your seat. 
little gentle rattle, make sure it's attached, it's not going to come loose. Check the seat belt, make sure it all works, no frays in the seat belt. And that all works great, leave it clicked in. Adjust the seat down, then we come into this side, put your steering wheel, nice, all adjustable, nice and solid. Handbrake and pedals. All the pedals are nice and none of them come off, so that's good. Then we'll go into the engine bay. Open this engine bay. Nice and gently. So in the engine bay, again, we're not mechanics, we're just checking to make sure we don't see anything wrong. Got the air cleaner here, uh, the filter there, make sure it's, that's all nice and clean. Got your radiator fluid here, make sure there's fluid in it. Got the fan, all the blades are attached. Check the belt for any frays or any damage. Your radiator hose, again, looking for any leaks or splits in the hose. Over here, battery, make sure it's attached. The terminals are nice and clean and they're bolted. Uh, you got your hydraulic levers here and they're all labeled um, and nice and clean. Come down to the actual hydraulics, check for any oil leaks, make sure all connected nice. General view over the engine, looking for any leaks again, any signs of damage, wear and tear, all looks nice and clean. And we have our dipstick here to check the oil. Close the engine bay. We move around to the back and we come around to the counterweight. Counterweight's attached, looks nice and clean, no cracks or anything in the counterweight. Check for the exhaust, looking for any debris, any rubbish caught in there. Easy to catch a light and have a look underneath as well, checking for any oil leaks. Come up to the top, then we have our gas cylinder. Again, make sure the gas bottle is secure. Nice and tight, we come around to the side of the gas, we turn the gas on. One full turn and put your ear in there to listen for any gap, uh, any signs of leakage and check the lines as well. One full turn is enough, uh, especially for emergency situations. So if we need to turn it off quickly, we run back in. One full turn and we can get out of there. Last thing on the gas is our compliance plate. Make sure there's a compliance plate and it's in date. 10 years compliance. Coming back across the top, We've checked all the levers. We've got the labels here. Make sure they're nice and clean and they're readable and they're attached. Then we finish again. Rear tire, like the other side. It's, this one here is an example. It's low on tread, but it has even wear. A uh, couple of little chunks out of the tire. Uh, tiny little cracks in the wall. Uh, the bolts are in, all nice and secure. And then the last thing is back over to the front tyre. Again, a lot more tread on these things. A few little chunks out of the tyres. Nice even wear again. No cracks in the walls. And the bolts are in. So there you have it. Pre-inspection. We're almost ready to go.